that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead with company worth keeping. That I bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open. You'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Fun fact, I totally forgot to play the long one with the explanation afterwards, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Here we go. It's been a while. I'm out of practice on this. Yeah, I know. I have to, you know. Okay, here we go. Put that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping. Then a bash a smile on your head. Come on in. The doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk in the tavern. The song's over. Welcome to the Tavern. We'll get to the topic and discussion in just a moment. Just want to let everybody know this is an adult show with adult topics, adult humor, and in other words, uh, we drink, we smoke, we swear, and we laugh at things we probably shouldn't, but we do it together. For those listening to the podcast, we record the podcast on our live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and have a live interactive chat audience. You might hear the sound of the bell, and that means I want to interrupt somebody to read a question or comment. For those on the live stream, we won't read off everything you put in chat, but we'll try to get to the most relevant or the most amusing, but hopefully some combination of the both. Now, while we introduce ourselves, go ahead and let us know what your vices are tonight. Hey everyone, welcome to the Tavern. I am Travis Sivart, author. Check me out on uh, Amazon and all those places. Tonight, my vices, I think I am just going to stick with this really famous Irish whiskey that people t tend to know very well. Tullamore Dew. It's an Irish whiskey, and I don't think I've ever tried it before. And after listening to a certain audiobook, I decided I wanted to. And it's it's really nice and really mellow. So what about you, Ed? What do you got tonight? Uh, Basil Hayden's and ginger ale. What is Basil Hayden? It's a bourbon. Okay. Is it a Virginia bourbon or...? No, Kentucky. Okay. Small batch. Andrea? What about you, Andrea? Oh, so, Andrea the chat here. I have in my Talk of the Tavern mug some cinnamon vanilla tea and knitting. Those are my vices. <laughs> nice. And just so everybody knows, if you decide you want one of those Talk of the Tavern mugs or a shirt or many, many other things, including shot glasses, flasks, hats, Check it out right there. You can get them at bit.ly slash tavern merch. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch or bit.ly slash tavern merch to B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch and the number two. Okay, let's get right over to this. Uh, we've had... Oh, by the way, I do wanted to mention that this is our first talk of the tavern that we've done since andrea and i got married this year so there we go yeah we got little inscribed rings i i picked up some titanium rings and Ed, do you have any idea if titanium was engraved is it the same color all the way through or am i going to end up scratching off that color on the surface do you have any idea me neither yeah, Any anybody, anybody yeah. in chat no um but i did have them personalized and engraved and the outside says i'll be with you till the end of the line a quote from captain america and uh, Winter Soldier. Well, it's Captain America 2. Well, thank you, Kennedy. Thank you for that. Congratulations. And on the inside, the more personal message, it says, I choose you for a lifetime of adventure. Because Andrea and I always call, whenever we go out and do something fun or silly. Um, oh, excellent, Jock. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, that's a more personal quote, because we call our little outings and stuff adventures. Mm -hmm. 
And Maria says titanium is not inherently scratch-proof, but the natural oxidation of the alloy allows for smaller scratches to become less visible over time. Very cool. And Jock says it'll be the same color. Trin has thrown her drink in there. I'm drinking an Angry Orchard Heart Fruit Cider Strawberry flavored. I do like Angry Orchard. It's a little sweet for my palate, but I do enjoy one once in a while. And it is fall, which is a perfect time for a cider. Mm -hmm. So, do we have any catching up to do or anything to talk about before I go into our uh, first question? Because I explained the thing about people have been sending us questions. Go ahead, Ed. Speaking of Captain America, I, I'm Captain America. It's it's official. Do tell. Yeah, you are. Um, I just hired a new guy at work the other day. He was a friend of one of my employees. And apparently he could not enter, remember my name, but he was introduced to me as the captain. And so he put me in his phone as Captain America. Nice, nice. Cool. Fitting. You'd make a good, you've got a decent fucking moral compass in you, man. I, I wouldn't have a problem with you wielding the shield. Um, Jock is drinking Sam Adams Oktoberfest and smoking Ooh. a nice Olivia. Yep. Olivia O tonight. So that's that's awesome. That's his vices for the evening. So we'll get into the first question. And again, keep in mind, we're going to wander back and forth and do what we want to do because it's the tavern. And to stay on topic would be against our religion? Standards. 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 That's much better. Okay. Standards, are, in my opinion, are often held higher in my eyes than religion. Um. Though they are not necessarily separate things. Okay, so the first question one of our um, viewers or friends sent us is, Dear Tavern, and it, it's a two-part question here. Does speeding really get you there faster? And the second part of the question that we can address, and I'm not really sure what exactly this means, does your GPS challenge you? So what do you guys think? Does speeding get you there faster? We'll start with part one of the question. No. You see it all the time. When you got to drive a new distance, driving to work, I'm sure you've seen it, Travis. Oh, yeah. The person, they go by you, zoom. As soon as you get to the next stoplight, there they are. They right take off like a fucking bed out of hell. Zoom. As soon as you get to the stoplight after that, there they are. But they do all stupid, all kinds of stupid shit on the road, passing on double lines and all that stuff. They still get there same time you do. Andrew, you got some thoughts on this? I do. So, you only get there faster when you're speeding if you're an ambulance <laughs> or a wambulance. That's an ambulance that blasts wham music. There we go. See, and Trin says, speeding does get me there faster. And Gary says, I don't drive, so I let others speed, and sometimes it works. Then we're talking about driving a car, driving a car. Yeah. As opposed to what? Mm. <laughs> um, Kennedy says, first one to the red light. Yeah. Always. Uh, here's, <laughs> here's what I'm going to tell you. Giving yourself five minutes extra time and chilling the fuck out while you drive so you can relax and enjoy the drive instead of turning into a frantic squirrel trying to get across the road and dodging back and forth is always going to be A, safer, obviously. Um, B, you're really going to get there at the same time because how many times have we seen these people who are weaving and they end up two cars ahead of you at best? Mm-hmm. Okay, and also, because of the way the roads are constructed and the way it should work, if everybody actually, I don't know, paid attention, followed the rules, everybody's going to get there in a reasonable amount of time. On the other hand, if you are racing the clock, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Or if you're 20 minutes late, don't worry about it, okay? 25 minutes ain't going to make a difference. That is something I've told myself and others. Yeah, guys, um, if you're running late, whether you're, as to use Ed, it's ex Ed's example, when you walk into work, if you're 20 minutes late or 25, you're in the same amount of shit or this lack of shit. It's not going to make a difference, and it's not worth 
a hundred and eighty dollar ticket, depending where in the country you are. Over killing somebody for yourself. Well, it depends who the person you kill is. Let's just put that out there and move on real quick. Um, so Maria says, if you go too fast, though, like my former carpool driver used to, boy, do the cops put those lights on fast if you speed past them. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you definitely get that 20-minute delay of being pulled over on top of, yeah. Just yeah, you're really late. Now, Trin throws in a, a thought on the second part of the question, and you technically can pick what route the GPS takes you, so I don't think it challenges you. Here's one thing I, I want to tangent on that GPS. <laughs> you, you can, like, get route options and choose to avoid highways or whatever, or tolls, ferries. Like, a lot of us have ferry problems. Um, but really, can we get the technology to a point where I can drag that line to the road I want to take instead? And I swear it used to be in the GPS, and I don't, it's not there anymore. Used to. You used to, well, the software that they used to sell Garmin. I mean, you could do your whole route and drag it where you wanted to and everything. Right. They don't have that software anymore. The fuck? It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. W what was the logic between, b besides taking that out? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And Maria's backing us up on this thing. You used to be able to. I'm like 90% sure. Does anybody use a GPS where you can actually change your route without just going the wrong way and making it recalculate. Recalculating. <laughs> See, and as for the second part of the question, does your GPS challenge you? How come we don't have more voiceovers for GPS so we can get like Sam, yeah. Sam, yeah. Sam Jackson to be more particular? Actually challenging you with that personality that, that we all adore in his characters. Yeah. Well, the opposite of the speeding thing for me, okay, I'm going to be the bad boy now, but I put in where I need to go on my GPS and it says, you're going to arrive there in an hour and five minutes. Challenge <laughs> accepted, motherfucker. <laughs> That's what that means. It's, uh, I don't know, Andrew, do you try to beat your GPS time that it gives you initially? Oh, I always beat the GPS time. <laughs> it's a, and you're not much of a speeder. No, but Andrew. it's wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. It's uh, but yeah, I I don't. As much as I know, I will beat whatever time it puts up there by a couple minutes, and then of course it keeps readjusting, which I feel like it's cheating. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't turn it into a NASCAR race to see if I can, you know, take 15 minutes off the time. No, but like when I go to work, there's two days of work. I go in later, two days I go in earlier. At six o'clock, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, I'm not going on the interstate right. in Richmond. And so, yeah, I beat the time taking the back road. <laughs> It doesn't know. So much of smart technology. Yeah, well, let's be smarter than our technology, please. How about that? It's uh Okay, do we have anything else on this question or do you think we've given enough advice on this? Sure. Next. Okay. I see Ed's checking out Maria's comment. You want to read that off, Ed? I, I didn't put my damn glasses on. and I'll read it. Off. Are, so. Maria says, I honestly would not survive without a GPS, though. I get lost every time I go anywhere and have to schedule took a wrong turn time, which I think mm -hmm. that's smart. Giving yourself that extra five, ten minutes to get where you're going, it lets you sit in the car for a few minutes before you go into whatever you got to face that day, whether yeah, it's, smoke you know, a doobie, you know. Yeah, whatever it takes, yeah. which, by the way, I... <laughs> I swear a lot of people do that before they come into where I work. But <laughs> not even, how do I turn on the mirror? Anyhow, um, did I tell you about that, Ed? Mm -mm. <laughs> so I do the hiring the for a certain large company, and there is a drug test associated. And a lot of people are like, I know what I'm doing. Okay. And there, there is a tablet they have to turn on 
and there's a mirror beside it because it's an oral drug test. We're not making them pee in a cup or pricking their finger okay. or fingering their prick. Um, hmm. And yeah, this one guy leaned over to the mirror and was like patting down the sides of the mirror. He's like, how do I turn the mirror? Or how do I turn this on? Thinking the mirror was the Kindle. And I'm like, dude, dude. really? <laughs> <laughs> now, it would have been hilarious if he was joking, but he wasn't. So it's a different kind of hilarity mm, mm, mm. it's uh wow yeah here's what i'll tell you a bit of life advice what do you got andrea i see you waving no okay mm. bit of life advice always leave early always arrive early it will help you relax and chill out it just makes mm -hmm. life better and then you can sit in the car finish that song Finish a podcast, finish, you know, that chapter of the audiobook, whatever you got going on, or at least just collect your thoughts for a moment. And uh, trust me, showing up early is always better than showing up late. Okay, the second question we have. <laughs> Dear Tavern. <laughs> I love this question. <laughs> Dear Tavern, does anyone in this damn company work besides me? How do I handle this? Andrea? Yeah. I see you grinning. What? Oh, um, do you work for yourself? That is the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Fire yourself, motherfucker. <laughs> I need more information to answer this question. Well, let, let's take it from both aspects. What if you do? What if you don't? I don't know. You tell me. Ed? I, I think we probably all have had that recently, especially. Because nobody works anymore. And those of us that are still working seem like we're working our asses off. Is that any different than how it was five years ago or 20 years ago though yeah you think so yeah. you think oh absolutely oh i just had that conversation at work the other day 20 years ago in the industry i'm in which i work in private security um uh, yeah there, there was plenty people that worked and there was a larger pool of people to choose from from the beginning um uh, security was more of a profession 20 years ago than it is now. Now we get the dreads of the earth and they don't want to work. That's interesting. See, my thoughts yeah. are this. Hey, Travis, what you doing with that gun? Go on, Travis. No, no, don't bring it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go that way around. Um, <laughs> here, here's what I find. Most people, and I've always found this, unlike Ed, and maybe it's just his industry where he's seen... I don't know, the people I've always worked with finally entering his industry. Because um, Ed and I met working at DMV. Mm -hmm. And you definitely had those people that always paused between customers or dragged a customer's interaction out. And to me, my thought is, if I can get this person out quicker, they're happier, I'm happier. And what's it matter if I'm helping them or the next person? And whether you work retail, restaurants, doctor's office, wherever you work, this feels logical to me. You're there to do a job. Why not do it quickly and efficiently right. instead of dragging anything out? Um, but yeah, I do find a lot of times when I'm sitting at any job, current or previous, a lot of people are lollygagging, waiting for somebody else to help the next person or do the next task instead of them just jumping on it. So my thoughts on this, if you feel like you're the only one working, yeah, so what? You're working, and that's what you're there to do. Because I need a fucking break. Right. Well, if you need a break, <laughs> take, the, take the damn break. It's not uh, always possible. <laughs> well, Ed, in your case, it's different because when you're right. working, when somebody else won't work, it means you have to show up at the site because nobody else is there. Mm -hmm. In most people's circumstances, it just means they're not doing the task. But if you're going to go work for however many hours, four hours, eight hours, mm -hmm. 12 hours, you might as well keep busy the whole time. 
So just do your job and don't worry about it. Now, on the other hand, here's a quick piece of advice. Don't break your back to make money for somebody else. Do a good job. Be good at it. Be effective. But sometimes failing will make your job easier than succeeding and stressing yourself out. Because if you don't have enough employees, supplies, whatever it is, to make it work anyway is sometimes shooting yourself in the foot. Don't do that to yourself. Go ahead and fail. That way, the company, the boss, whoever realizes we need more of this to make it work correctly. Maria says on the flip side, though, if you're the only one pulling their weight, when you need a break, management comes down hard on you because the stats slide. Very yeah. good point. Yeah. But your individual stats should be fine. And if they're only <clears throat> gauging the whole group by the group stats, they're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can do too good of a job. Right. And, w and it's always expected. Once you do it, it's always expected. And when you need that break, it's like, are you kidding me? I need you. It's like, you know, well, you needed me last week, the week before, and the week before that, too. Can I get yeah. a break now? <clears throat> yeah. How, how about you get somebody in here? There we go. That's exactly right. Maria says you can be punished for being too efficient. You yep. sure can, and it sucks. And that's what I'm saying is once you realize that's happening, put the brakes on. I'm not saying turn around and go the other direction. I'm just saying... Don't let yourself get screwed by other people's laziness to where you're affecting your mental or physical or emotional health. Yeah. Andrew, you've been really quiet on all this, and I know you've had these complaints <laughs> in different jobs. She's oh, so yeah. happy now. She yeah, is. I have a great job now. The whole company is three people. I'm one of three, and everybody works. I love my job. Oh, Andrea, yeah. you're one in a million. I know. And so is my job. So a fun fact about Andrea's job is, you know how every time you hear the boss like saying, oh, I got to talk to you, you're like, uh oh, am I in trouble? Every time Andrea tells her boss, I need to talk to you, the boss is like, you're not quitting, are you? <laughs> Andrea's like, no, I love what I'm doing. Um, that's Can I that. be bought? Go ahead. Kennedy brought up a good one. In some jobs, the other staffers will get upset if you work too well. Right. Which is true because now you're making them look bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you find a way to do it quicker and easier and more efficiently, they're all like, the hell's your problem? Mm -hmm. um, and also, here's a fun fact. When you're trying to, when you realize, hey, I've got a great way to do this. It makes it quicker and easier, more efficient to keep hitting that word today i had a situation like that where i do this one thing so much quicker than anyone else i like literally 30 to 50 percent the time it takes anybody else and the person that was doing it today i looked at them and went hey can i help you can i show you and they're like i'm never going to do it as fast as you and they got angry i'm like i know <laughs> but you could do it faster than you are now right you know, improve yourself a little bit. Yeah, well, I don't even think this person is avoiding doing the work because they're a good worker. I think they're doing too much. And they mm. care too much, realizing mm. this certain task you don't have to be that damn careful about. It, it, it's running a report to see how we're doing throughout the day. Calm down. Just do the thing. Throw it yeah. out there. Yeah, Andrea. All right. In a previous job, <laughs> I, I do everything because it's not hard. So I'm like, okay, I want to learn everything and do the things so I can whatever. Mm -hmm. And I do that. Well, there was a couple of days I wasn't feeling the best. And I was not going my normal speed. I was going everybody else's speed. And I was told... You do things too slow, you need to be faster. 
This is why I'm not at the job anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody got raises. I got the lowest. Mm. This is why I'm not there. So I, yeah. That's another sad fact of society nowadays is you have to be able to sell yourself. You have to be able to brag. And frankly, if you have the bonus skill of throwing other people under the bus and passing <clears throat> blame, especially for your own mistakes to someone else, you will get ahead. And you're a piece of shit for it. Mm -hmm. That's my problem. If I make a mistake, it's like, look, this happened. I, I admit it. And it doesn't happen again. But yeah, that's, that's why I didn't do very well. Yeah. Did it wrong. Okay. There we go. Yeah, and and Maria says I was in a very similar situation, Andrea, which really opened my eyes as to how at least call center management works. This is across the board. This is I would yeah. love to say it's only that, but Andrea was definitely not in a call center. No, but it's it's at a big company, a big where where there's lots of people. You get lost in the shuffle. They don't give a shit. Until yeah. you're not performing at the highest that you were. So you got to start low, stay low, and then you'll get ahead. It's true. Mm -hmm. What was that noise? I'm sorry. It's my work phone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, mm. Quit doing such a good damn job, Ed. True story. This, this whole question could have been phrased by Ed himself. <laughs> We're pausing dramatically to see if Ed has to type in I'm way too drunk to do anything right now No, um, I'm just telling him to keep his ass home <laughs> Does that mean you have to leave now? No, I already got it covered earlier today Maria says, yeah, Ed the boss is listening to the stream and doesn't want you getting ideas. <laughs> My boss is laying in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, could be actually across, listening. Across the hall. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, okay, well, Ed is uh, taking care of that. Any other thoughts on this? Or, are you okay there, Andrea? Sleepy. Sorry. Sleepy. Stop it. So, should I move to the next question, or we get any other thoughts and ideas on this one? I'm good. I think to summar good. summarize it, don't break your back for people that don't give a fuck about you. On the other hand, you're there to do a job, so do your damn job. And fail when you need to, so you get the help you need. Um, okay, Dear Tavern. Really? Hold on. We're, we're backing up because Kennedy threw <laughs> into chat. There are some industries and jobs where everyone works hard. What industry and job does everyone work hard? Because I have never seen that one. Oh, I can answer that. What? Not in this country. It's possible. <clears throat> Forestry. Interesting answer there. I, I, I'm not becoming a lumberjack and I don't care. <laughs> Fisherman, okay, yeah, that that is fair. When you oh yeah, that's. So what I'm hearing is jobs where you're likely to be killed by some horrible accident. No, that makes sense because you're going to be more aware <laughs> and and on your damn toes. And also, when everybody is big and tough. Yeah, you're more likely to pull your own weight because the big and tough people you're working with might beat the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've said that a few times, but they won't let me do it. <laughs> they looked at me wrong. I'm holding up my yellow card. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the police, the firefighters, mm. a lot of, so, yeah. And Maria says, pretty much, 
you work harder when your life is on the line. Mm -hmm. Kennedy says being a teen caddy is always work. Are you? That's are you, physical work. Is that a teenager who is being a caddy for golfers, or is that being somebody who carries around a bunch of teenagers and distributes them to people that need them? No, don't do that. Yeah. That's illegal, Kennedy. Don't do that. So I, I've seen that caddies, they work hard. I, I've seen Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Damn I've crocodiles. seen Caddy Shack. That's right. Okay, next question. Dear Tavern, am I allowed to compliment people, especially of the opposite sex, at work anymore? Hey, this fits right in with the last one because the simple answer is how much do you like your job? Mm. Well, I think we need to differentiate with this one the difference between a compliment and flirting and harassment right yeah because it's a bit of a spectrum isn't it to say mm -hmm. man you're great at that meaning part of the job i think that's fair and reasonable hey cool shoes you can say that to anybody man i love you in six inch heels first of all who's the man you just addressed <laughs> I know a couple. I, I I do too, but I I honestly have not worked at those jobs where six inch heels are ever appropriate. It's uh. So what do you guys think, Andrea? What do you think? Can you compliment people at work? Not not anymore. I I don't think you can. Well, I guess it depends on where you work, but. but... In general, no. <laughs> no. It, and not just from a sexual harassment quarter thing. It's one of the things I've struggled with with one of the officers working for me now. Um, he is a very outgoing guy and very friendly and very, you know, what you have for lunch today and nice to everyone, overly nice to everyone. And... It's not a bad thing, I don't feel personally. However, in today's society, it can go from, and I've tried to explain the difference to him, um, when someone does come back in and he's checking them in, instead of what did you have for lunch today, did you have a good lunch? One says, I hope you had a good time. The other, someone can say, why does that nosy motherfucker need to know what I had for lunch? Because I'm hungry, and I want to know what I'm going to order later. <laughs> Can you give me some suggestions? Because I've actually done that at work. Um, as people come in, I'm like, oh, it's almost lunchtime. And they're like, yeah, I'm going out. I'm like, what are you getting? <laughs> I'm really curious. What do you have? Um, Maria says, I feel as a woman, it really depends on the compliment. Hey there, mama. You could bounce a nickel off that ass of yours. Is a lot different than... That's amazing work. Yeah, it is. And that's that spectrum. And a uh, hey, general... But, but see, now you left me wondering, can you really bounce a nickel off that ass of yours? <laughs> well, if you have good aim, you can wedge it in there, especially with these guys oh, that wear okay. those pants so low nowadays. This is true. <laughs> it's a, just as they turn and walk away, you just hold that quarter and go... Mm. See if you can snap that into the crack. One of our client contacts is named Stacy, and every time the phone rings and I see her name on the phone, I want to say, "Stacy, does your mom really have it going on?" <laughs> I saw. And I'm going to slip. I know I'm going to slip. I, I saw a, a TikTok today that somebody is like, "Is it's you know this is pretty young lady going." Tell me an unpopular opinion of yours. And then flips to this guy, you know, kind of average looking 30 something year old guy. And he's like, po unpopular opinion? Stacy's mom didn't really have it going on. But also, <laughs> did you know? Oh, what is that noise? Crystal! How are you? It's good to see you. Thank you for that subscription. Here's to you. 
Appreciate that. Here's to you, Crystal. You doing okay? Yeah, I'll drink to that. There we go. Uh, then he then he busts into and do you realize that cows cause more deaths in the U.S. than blah 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 blah? And I'm like, that's okay. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, here's the what I'll say: is eight pounds. If whatever compliment you can issue, you could not say to a anybody in your workplace. B you and by anybody, I, I, I'm extending this into the B here. If you couldn't say that to your boss, you probably shouldn't say it to anybody. There's so some people at their job the, they can't. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's true. So there's some jobs where people cannot say to their boss, you're doing a great job. I say that to my boss. Well. You, and see, so, my boss is never going to say that to me because she doesn't want somebody to misconstrue it as favoritism. Or sexual harassment. Well, yeah, well. And to be clear, Ed's boss is his wife. <laughs> at least at yeah, work. She is. At house, they split <laughs> the boss duty depending what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> um, Maria, big old paragraph right here. Let me read this off. Um... If it comes off as creepy, or could come off as creepy, it probably shouldn't be said. And I'm going to interrupt her com com comment here to say um, some people don't. Yeah, Andrea. If you do it correctly, anything can sound creepy. I could prove that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like how you hold your pencil. <laughs> um, but there is, Maria goes on. But there is a responsibility of the recipient of the compliment, comment, whatever, to let the person know if they are uncomfortable or not. I think the harm comes when there's no discussion. I don't feel comfortable, uh, quote, I don't feel comfortable with you telling X, Y, Z. Should be accepted by whoever is making the uncomfortable comment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Jock says, if a male gives a woman a compliment, it can go two ways. If you're handsome... It's a compliment. If you're ugly, it's harassment. <laughs> That's an interesting concept. Um, mm. There you go. And Kennedy says, if it comes off as creepy, you might be governor of New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's what I'll tell you. I don't know if, you, if our listeners and viewers realize this, but human beings are fucking animals. And by fucking animals, I really literally mean fucking animals. Okay? Part of our imperative biological need is reproduction. And we're trying to create a society without it, without that being a part of the interaction. And I get that. And that'd be great. And I'd love to work towards that. But no, I well, enjoy that. Well, in the workplace. <laughs> You know, it's oh, okay. to okay. be able to okay. separate well, it, it because sometimes you want that. See, that's an interesting feedback right there. <laughs> oh, God. A couple comments. Maria says it, the interesting feedback part. Not true. If they're handsome, I feel like they're being sarcastic or mean. If they aren't handsome, I feel like it's genuine. Now, here I want to point out every time I have complimented Maria, she has taken it as genuine. So I'm hearing what you're saying. Travis is ugly. I gotcha. Thank you, Maria. Appreciate you pointing that out. <laughs> Kennedy says, fucking animals was frowned on when I was working for a vet. It's, uh, mm. well, don't worry. With the modern world, if you work for a vet, instead of being frowned on, it would be filmed on. Yeah, because there's a website for that. We're going to pause for a moment of awkward silence. <laughs> and the look on Andrea's face is priceless. It <laughs> probably looks just like the animal that got snuck up on by Kennedy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've totally lost track. Was I? <laughs> I don't know. See, and that's interesting. What? What was the question? Uh, we're, we're, we're the compliment opposite sex at work. See. Jock's gone one way and Maria's gone the other way. And, th and that's very interesting because 
when you feel you're unattractive, a lot of times a compliment is taken as sarcasm. Yeah, true. This is why I say, coach your compliments. Because before we even started the show with the live stream, I said, Maria, your nails look amazing because Maria does this great art on her nails and puts it on social media, etc. And And that's a compliment that could be passed forward without going, as Maria said earlier, hey, I got a nickel, you got an ass, let's get together and see if this works out for us. Um, yeah, yes, you can compliment people at work is my closing thoughts, but you really have to have some goddamn sense on what kind of compliments you're going to pass around. Yeah. If you're looking to thrill them and excite them, you're giving the wrong compliment at work. Yeah, Andrea? So you may just say something a compliment, not mean anything by it, and they'll take it the wrong way. Exactly. And they'll start harassing exactly. you. Exactly. Thinking, oh, yeah, you're interested or whatever. Yeah. It's true. And Maria says, probably comes from personal experience. If you were bullied on your appearance, especially as a child, you're probably not going to believe it when people deem you attractive or complimenting you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, that's something we can debate here and now or not at all. Is that on you or is that on them? Because we all have insecurities because that's how we're wired. And go ahead. Sorry. Go, no, go ahead, Ed. Jump in. There is an opposite side of that too. I mean, I I worked with a woman one time that um Just she once. had been beaten down by her by her husband, and I right. don't mean in the physical sense. I mean, you're ugly. Ain't nobody, ain't a man ever gonna want you or anything. And and she would literally gush when someone would compliment her on how nice she looked today. She needed to hear that because of the way he had treated her. So there is an opposite side to that too. You got to realize when you're giving a compliment, if you're giving it to get something from it, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. If you're giving a compliment to give something to somebody else, that's the right way to do it. Now, some people might think, wow, you look hot in that outfit, whatever direction that compliment is pointed. That still has that tie of you're looking to get something out of it. Andrew? So also, this can go on the other side, too. If someone gives you a compliment, it may be genuine, don't say, oh, well, or they say your hair looks nice, or, and you say, oh, well, did it? no, just say thank you. And that's an issue Andrea and I both deal with. We, we very much deflect compliments. Now, by the way, my favorite way, I, I walked in today where, uh, to work wearing this outfit, and uh, uh, one of the women I work with went, that's a great outfit. And I went, your face is great. <laughs> and, and that's that's my, I really enjoy oh, deflecting a comment like that, mm -hmm. you know. And she went, oh, that's because that's all you could see because she was seated at a table. And then I did say well that's because if i say that about any other part of you hr is going to be involved <laughs> it would be in trouble yeah let's just stick with your face here you know it's well, just stand on up so i can check the rest of it out that's right then i'll let you know what i think <laughs> i do work with some great people by the way and they definitely appreciate my humor but when it's not just the people I work with, it's very different how I behave. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people don't have that common sense gauge on how to do these things. And if you don't, shut your damn mouth for your own sake, for their sake. Um, and if you do, then you probably realize when handing out a compliment, you need to hand out this. Absolutely, Kennedy. Kennedy asked if you, if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? But you got to come here. I can't afford to travel over there. So, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> Maria says, you got to feel people out. Out, not up, Travis, <laughs> to see if they are receptive or not. Absolutely. Um, but Ed? that's the other part of that. Like I just said, you know, you said that, and I would, if I had felt them out and felt comfortable with it, I would say stand up so I could check the rest of it out. Right. Which today, that might be okay. Three days from now, they may be mad at me about something, and all of a sudden, I'm in trouble. <laughs> right. But also, your face is awesome. I could say that to anybody in the office. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say that to my boss. I could say that to male, female, non-binary. Anybody can get that compliment Especially we said in that angry way, like it's this rude comeback, which it's actually a compliment. So, yeah, um, if you have to ask the question, am I allowed okay. to compliment people, especially the, of the opposite sex at work anymore? The answer is no. No. Because you have to ask. Right. Um, now, I think we could probably squeeze one more question in here before the end of this episode. Um, let's see what we can do here. Um, and how many, yeah, we can do one more. So the next question, dear Tavern, I want to take my significant other somewhere special, but money is tight. Can you suggest a weekend getaway that is affordable? Either of you got any thoughts on that? Yes. What do you got, Ed? Stay at home. <laughs> Expand on that. One of our favorite weekend getaways, we throw blankets and pillows on the floor. We sit in front of the fireplace and drink wine all day long. It's a good weekend getaway. And sometimes there's sex involved. With each other? <laughs> or, or, or do you have to go to the bathroom with a bottle of lotion? <laughs> so... That does sound great, except for getting up off the floor at the end of that weekend. <laughs> By the way, if you're in your 20s or 30s, this may not apply to you, but beyond that, it may. <laughs> you don't have a fireplace? Just get one of those DVDs that has the fireplace on it and put it on your television. It it works, too. By the way, there are Netflix streaming services. What, Andrea? Netflix has, has a show, It's Fireplace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, or thunderstorms, or tropical beach, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it can be like looking out a window, and you make yourself some Mai Tais and lounge around. Yep. Um, so what about you, Andrea? Any thoughts on this? Um, you can always camp in the backyard, if you have a backyard, you know. Change your scenery, but you still have a bathroom. Always a plus. There's always things to do. Um, it depends on where you're at, but I know where we're at, there's cities that are around and they do festivals, they do art shows, they do different things throughout the year. There's always things you can go to that are inexpensive or free. And just hmm. going out and enjoying nature doesn't have to cost a lot. Yeah, true. I want to read a couple comments and I have some thoughts to add to this. And I, I love this one here from Maria. She says, uh, I go for long drives with the dog and the kid. We have no idea where we're going to end up. Could be the beach, could be a park, could just be for a drive. But it's nice to get away without spending a bunch of cash. Kennedy says, there's also some Airbnb that are very inexpensive in off season. Mm -hmm. And Andrea and I have a friend that runs an Airbnb and yeah, it is nice. It mm -hmm. it gets you to a different place that you don't look at every day. And sometimes that's what mm -hmm. you wanted. For the getaway mm -hmm. part, I want to talk about that. Andrea just said something. There's always camping. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you money. Generally $25 no, to $50 no. a day. Maybe more if you're going to someplace fancy-ish. But, and then of course there is a cost. You have to have basic gear to do this, whether it's a tent or 
Hell, an air mattress in the back of your pickup truck or SUV works also, just so you know. Um, there's ways to do this. Andrea and I once had the same day off, and I went, hey, I just realized Philadelphia is only five hours away from us. The next day, we got in the car nice and early to avoid rush hour. We, we went just after rush hour. We drove to Philadelphia, parked. By the way, parking in Philadelphia, ridiculous. <laughs> we didn't know that part. Um, and the tolls. So oh it wasn't God. a cheap weekend. Well, it wasn't expensive either. It didn't cost yes. thousands of dollars. But we went there. We parked. We walked around, saw the Rocky statue in front of the museum, saw the Liberty Bell, had a cheesesteak, wandered past a cat cafe, which we ever so wisely as cat fiends avoided, got back in the car and came home. We spent 10 hours plus in the car together talking. And then we spent three or four hours in Philadelphia seeing a few big sights. They had museums that were free. They had all kinds of things. Just people watching in another city is always fun. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it all depends on your level of expectation. If you understand the simple things in life, it's easy to create an inexpensive getaway, whether mm. it's on your own living room floor, which, by the way, for living room floor getaways, what is the value of picking your favorite trilogy of movies? I don't care if it's Saw or Lord of the Rings, and spending a day just watching them with a fruit and cheese platter. Or, yeah. hell, go get White Castles from the freezer section and microwave them, whatever. <laughs> a box of wine. A box of wine, there we go. It has a spigot? It no. does. Well, okay. Some of them are good. <laughs> Maria, two comments here. I'm going to read the first one first because the other one makes me laugh. Maria says, my brother and his girlfriend go for long hikes, like multi-day hikes. They get to spend a couple of days with just them, some sleeping bags, water, and other minor supplies, and a tarp. And then she adds, and bear spray because they will destroy you. <laughs> I'm just curious, what is bear spray? Because I think like mace. Ed, you... That's essentially what it is. It, yeah, it's it's mace. Only oh. it's in a much bigger can. It's got a trigger on it. And an air horn. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's just very, very strong mace. Now, that, of course, it depends where you are and what kind of bears yeah. you're dealing with. If you're yeah, in the Rockies and you got about. grizzly where bears. Where the hell are they hiking at? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here in Virginia, we got black bears. You blow an air horn, that little fucker's running away. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got a 12 foot tall on its hind legs, 600, 700 pound Kodiak. Yeah. Oh, Maria's clarified. It gives off a scent. No, she's Canadian. So, you know, they got things that we don't have here in America. It gives off a scent that bears don't like, so they don't come near you. And if they do come near you, it will might help them, like, not want to kill you. What about shitting yourself? Does that do the same thing? Asking for a friend. Ooh, my tummy feels funny. That's nasty. So other weekend getaways that are very inexpensive. <clears throat> Andrea mentioned local festivals. This is something to watch and plan ahead for so you know they're out there. Um, sometimes just street fairs. Sometimes, especially around... Fourth of July or the winter holidays, there are parades and out season there. season changes, there's usually something for every season change, you know? Right, right. Definitely, generally. Um, here on the East Coast, the cherry blossoms are big near Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. Maria says, nah, they don't <laughs> mind the scent of soil pants. Not a good defense against bears. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't wear pants is what I'm hearing. Gotcha. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of places you can go. I took Andrea on a four dollar date one time. It was her birthday. Um, we're near Richmond. We went to a famous graveyard, 
Hollywood Cemetery and walked around for a couple hours. Then we went to an art museum that was free. And we walked around for a couple hours. And then we went to the Bird Theater, which is a 1920s, 1930s theater with the, the pipe organ that comes up out of the stage and everything. But they play second-run movies, and it's $2 per person. So it was a $4 date for her birthday. And you can do it. You've just got to put a little work into it. Kenny says, I love history. Spending a few hours at Gettysburg was excellent. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. Just going to... In the state of Virginia, they have roadside signs for historic places, moments. I've done that. You can just follow those signs because you can go to the state website and find out where those signs are. And I don't know if they did it, but I once talked to somebody and they were going to have college kids record those signs. So as you go by them and if you're on the right website, it will trigger it with your GPS mm. to read that off to you. I don't know if they ever did that. <clears throat> and there we go. See, Kennedy says a lot of times libraries have free passes to museums. Something also, Ed, you'll know about the state park pass or the federal park pass. Um, the uh, National Parks Pass, it's it's $80 a year, but you can get in the, every national park in the country. We get one every year. I mean, you got to put up 80 bucks up front, but if you visit the parks a lot, it's well worth it. Right, and museums quite often will have that too. And it'll be, Andrea can tell you more about this, but they'll have like a group of museums. And if you pay that one-time fee, and they even have reduced prices for low-income families and everything, you can then get into these four or six or however many museums for free when you buy this one pass for the year. Andrea, do you want to speak to that? Well, I know um, out where I'm at, when my kid was little, I get this pass to the museums. It's like a children's museum, some of the local museums, and then you get discounts on things. It's really good. But also some of the theme parks, you can do like a season pass or have a thing where you pay a little amount every month and you can go all year. That's a fair point. Yeah, just so you guys know, if, you, if you're like, well, theme parks are expensive, stop thinking Disney. Think of your local theme parks. And $120 per person sounds like a lot, but when you realize you could use that for seven or eight months for unlimited visits, in like two visits, it pays for itself. Andrew? Yeah, because a lot of times it's 40 or $50 per person per thing, mm -hmm. so it's cheaper to buy that, and sometimes you get added discounts in the shops or for food. And then you so can make it a... Go, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Andrew. If you're going to go a few times, even in the season, and you have a, a good-sized family, it's worth it. Um. Yeah, and Maria here says, oh, since it's spooky season, you could take a few hours and just explore the local graveyard and check out the older one. Sounds morbid as hell, but super interesting. Andrea and I, when we first started dated, dating, we actually went dressed up, all kind of like Victorian Gothic, and went to a local graveyard and had a picnic in the graveyard and then went around and took pictures of interesting tombstones and everything. Yeah, monthly tea party. You get friends, you come out, or dress up, take a tablecloth and some dishes. We went, we did that and went to McDonald's. Yeah, for anybody that hasn't realized it, Andrea and I have been really fucking poor for a large part of our life. So finding things to do for little or no money, it, it's, it, it's out there, it's available, but it does take some creativity and work. Kennedy says... I've used those passes. I used to get a family membership as a Father's Day present each year to Natural History in New York City, and other museums were free. Yeah, it does take, in these cases, if you're absolutely broke, you know what? Maybe stop eating out for a month, and believe it or not, you'll be able to afford one of these passes to a theme park or museums. What, Andrea, you got something? Well, so... Uh, as a single mother and my kid was little, we never ate out. So it, it didn't, we couldn't save the money, but there are things you just have to look for it. Like 
You can go to, you can take the free membership to Sam's Club, Costco, whatever. Go there. Go during the sample time. There's your lunch. <laughs> you can true. go Because oh, done it. You can go over to Barnes & Noble. And they have a play area for the kids. You can read books. They don't kick you out for reading books. They have free Wi-Fi. There's things. Okay, let's wrap this up. Any closing thoughts on any of this stuff, guys? Andrew just said it all. There's things. There is. <laughs> okay, so let's wrap this up and do our closing thing here and make sure you guys join us for another podcast or another live stream absolutely super really soon. Here comes the outro stuff. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can email us at talkthetavernshow at gmail.com to let us know your thoughts on the show's topic, suggest another topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, or just have us read a message out on air to someone in your life. Thanks for supporting the show by downloading the podcast, sharing it on social media, grabbing some shirt stickers and mugs from bit.ly slash tavern merch, or barware patches and hats from bit.ly slash tavern merch too. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch or tavern merch and the number two. two. Thanks to everyone who joined joined us live at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk and everyone who supports the tavern by subscribing, hosting, throwing bits, raids, and most of all, commenting. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night.